Throughout the years of making over my home and while decorating for the holidays, I've learned a lot about myself and some pretty smart tips on how to decorate for Christmas. So this is what I'm no longer doing to decorate for the holidays, but what I will be doing for those of us that are budget conscious and maybe a little bit tight on space. Oh, oh, okay, well now what? Oh! Isn't that a vibe? I'm actually gonna ruin this DIY. Instead of buying a bunch of holiday decor, I just need to light some damn candles. It's great, it's awesome. It's gonna be amazing. If you're a subscriber, you may have seen that I recently made over this fireplace. Now it is a non-working fireplace and the changes I made were mostly just aesthetics. But after that video went up, many of you sent me bioethanol fireplaces. And these are safe to use indoors without a vent because they burn clean and they use a bioethanol fuel, which is a little bit of an eco-friendlier option because it uses food waste and crops to make the fuel, making it a renewable energy source. I can't believe I didn't think of this sooner because I've actually DIY'd a tabletop bioethanol fire pit and we have one at the office. So I think this is a genius idea in order to get my fireplace to give me all those fiery, cozy vibes that I really want. I got this tabletop bioethanol fireplace from an online marketplace we don't like to promote here, but it was actually on sale because it had reeded glass instead of clear glass, which I'm actually not gonna use this part, but you should tell me what I should DIY with it because I love reeded glass. Since I'm not using it on a tabletop and I'm using it like a fireplace, I'm actually going to just be using the insert and definitely the snuffer for my fireplace. It's also really important you read the instructions for this. Okay, next thing we need to do is make this look a little bit more realistic. So I got these ceramic fireplace logs second hand on Marketplace. Essentially, these are just decorative, they're ceramic, and they're safe to use in indoor and outdoor fire pits like this. I'm really happy with how much money I saved getting these second hand because I paid $40 cash for them when online they were going for about $100 for some realistic looking ceramic fireplace logs. Next we have to put in the fuel. You can only use bioethanol fuel in these ventless fireplaces and you need to read all the instructions, all the warnings on both the fuel and the fire pit before you do this. Now I actually got this fuel from Canadian Tire, AKA kind of like a local hardware store, but just so you guys know, places like Amazon use marketplace trends to raise prices based on the interest of a product. So I actually found that this was a lot cheaper in store than it was online, just something for you to pay attention to. I'm actually so in love with this and I can't believe how much it already cozies up the space. And if you don't have a non-working fireplace like me or any type of fireplace, like I said, these are tabletops. So they make some really beautiful ones. I like the ones with wood bases because that just goes with fire in my mind. So you can get this vibe even if you don't have any type of fireplace. I actually couldn't wait to share it with Elliot either. Oh! Isn't that a vibe? It's pretty awesome. So since I'm not the only one that lives here, I did want to pick my partner's brain, Elliot, about what is important to him for the holidays. And I quote, <clears throat> Stockings are cool. I don't need a tree, which I agree with. We also just don't have the space for it. I like wreaths, white lights only, festive sweaters, big plates under regular dinner plates, nice centerpieces, and eggnog. I can work with this. Time to shop for some greens in order to DIY my own wreaths and garlands. And I must hit the thrift store for some key items that I've been on the lookout for. Everybody knows it soon, it's Christmas. Streets are full and decorated, people shop exhilarated. Everybody knows it soon, it's Christmas. Everyone knows that soon. It's Christmas! 
I'm really hoping I bought enough. So the plan is to make two garlands, one wreath, and I paid 17 bucks for three bunches. We'll see if I can get enough out of that. A real looking garland on a place like Crate and Barrel is $150 and the wreath was $200. So I'm hoping I can save some money by doing it this way. I'm just laying my assorted branches of which I picked up mountain hemlock, cedar, and cypress. And I'm making sure that the length will fit around my windows. And then I'm just attaching them together using some floral wire. So there's already some screws from when I put up my shutters that I'm just going to loosen a little bit so I can wrap the wire around those to secure my garlands. Battery operated string lights are my hack to your traditional Christmas lights because like I'm not really getting up on the roof or putting up traditional Christmas lights. When I turn them on on a timer, they stay on for 12 hours and then they come on every day at the same time. So I don't have to flick a switch ever, except for once. <laughs> Now let's say you're renting or maybe in a condo. You can put up a garland on the inside. I, I think that looks beautiful. It's very retail store-esque, but I would actually not use real garland. I would invest in faux garland because it doesn't matter how hard you try, it's gonna dry out. And I just am not here for the mess and like the crunchiness. So I am no longer doing indoor real garlands, only outside, but I will be decorating inside. We'll get to that tomorrow. Bad news is I don't have enough to make two garlands. Good news is I definitely have enough to make another wreath. I bought a wreath once and I just kept the frame that it came on and I use this every year to make another wreath. Okay, it's a really dark and cold and rainy day. At least it's not snowing yet. Uh, so I think it's the perfect day to dive into some candles that I have been neglecting. What really gets the holidays and the Christmas season for me is just coziness. Instead of buying a bunch of holiday decor, I just need to light some damn candles. <laughs> if you're like me, you probably have some candles that have melted down, but no longer light, although there is still some wax in there that we don't wanna waste. So you can use this wax and release the fragrance in a variety of ways. For example, we've used the double boiler system before and melted the wax and then poured it into a new candle with a new wick. Another way is actually pour boiling water into the candle and it's gonna have all the wax float to the top. While that boils, I actually wanna explore another method which is candle warmers. So this is actually marketed as a mug warmer, but you can use it for candles as long as they're in a ceramic or tempered glass container, which I'm hoping mine is. So, let's see what happens. For this, I'm just gonna pour in my hot water. I'm gonna do about that much so that when it melts, all the wax is gonna rise to the top. It's kinda like a lava lamp. A lava lamp. Okay, I think it's gonna take these experiments some time to see if they work. Let's leave these and keep decorating. Okay, so since I'm not doing a tree, I definitely wanna make this fireplace like the holiday focal point. I think it just makes a lot of sense. Last time I was decorating for the holidays, I picked up all these brass candlestick holders to be part of my decor. Sometimes I use them throughout the year, sometimes I don't. Not sponsored, but my favorite candles are a Canadian brand, Yummy Candles. They come in like so many different colors. Of course, they got boring white. Hehe. <laughs> so I think we just need to decorate the mantle with some candles. Maybe unpopular opinion though, I wanna take down our art just for the Christmas season because I don't trust 
the candles not to light it on fire or damage it. Also, it's like not the most Christmassy thing. Also, this is just the perfect place for a potential DIY wreath. I know Elliot doesn't want me to take it down, but I'm just temporarily taking it down. It'll make us appreciate it when we put it back up. It'll be like, oh, we missed you, you know? Distance makes the heart grow fonder. That's what I'll tell him. If you don't know this hack, just to make a candle stay when it's a little too large, you just drip some wax in. And while it's still wet, put in the candle. Next, let's tackle some stockings. I actually got a few of these stocking hangers as a hand-me-down from my mom. And this is an OG DIY, a little stocking out of a sweater hack. And not that you're counting, but if you're wondering why I have three stockings instead of just two for Ellie and I, I actually have my friend Ariana living with us right now, which is really exciting because we're planning to do a whole little like cooking evening, somehow make pasta holiday themed. I don't know, it's gonna be a whole adventure. We're gonna film it as part of the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. But um, I think it's time to figure out a wreath situation for this fireplace. So while I was shopping for greenery, I picked up these magnolia leaves, which I think are just so beautiful. And when I was thrifting, I got this braided rope wreath, which I thought could be good as a base, maybe. Uh, disclaimer, I don't really know what I'm doing here, so we are really hoping this is gonna turn out. So I'm trimming it down so it's just one branch and not multiple branches. And then I have to cut off any leaf that's not facing the right way so that we can reattach it. Is everybody trusting the process? <laughs> okay, I have four branches kind of wired on, kind of starting to make a circle shape, but we need to add now all these extra leaves that we cut off, and I think it'll really help sell the wreath shape. Also, if you guys know the reason why magnolia leaves are combined with like all the holiday decor, let me know in the comments. small, but I think it's cute. Okay, this is looking really good and I'm very curious to see how it dries out and if I can even just use it again next year. Time will tell, I'll keep you guys updated and I cannot wait to see everything lit, cozy vibes, but we're gonna save that till the end. If you're wondering about the candle situation, I am too, so, so let's go back to that. So this did not melt all of the wax. I've seen this done online and it's worked better. So maybe if you just have a smaller jar or if I didn't pour as much water into it, it would have worked. I can definitely give it another shot. And let's see if we can get out this wax. Oh, 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 okay, well now what? Okay, so some of the wax came out, but I would have to do it again to get the rest. And Obviously, I don't really have a good way to burn this. Unless I put it into a cup and put it onto my mug slash candle warmer, which it does take a little bit to heat up and depending on how thick your candle is, I mean, I think this scenario is best for your end of life candles, but I can smell it, it's melted. I'm assuming it'll evaporate, but maybe it won't. I don't really know. That's that. My approved method is definitely gonna be using this bottom candle warmer for all of your end of life candles. I came into the studio today because I need to use the sewing machine and just the space to get a couple things done. So my list today includes doing something to this apron that you guys saw me thrift the other day. I believe this is the Instacart logo. Um, Clearly somebody had like a PR package or something. We don't need this logo on here, so I need to figure out a way to cover it because otherwise, this is such a me apron. We obviously need to pet Danny. And then lastly, I need to figure out what I wanna do for like a centerpiece or like florally, branchy type arrangements 
in my space. I have a few vases that I would wanna swap out the greens with, which I think is an affordable way to swap out your decor for the holidays and also just, it's not like hitting you over the head, this is Christmas decor. And then I can just bring back those dried pieces maybe in the spring. So those are kind of my tasks for the day. Peggy, what do you think I should do to cover up this logo? It's so cute. It doesn't even look like a logo. Like I feel like it wants like a faux leather on it. Like a corner moment. Yeah. I feel like we have some faux leather in the storage room too, I, I think. I think you're right. <laughs> oh, hold on. <laughs> That was on my to-do list. Wow, I'm literally nailing this so hard. <laughs> okay. This looks pretty good. I mean, it's not, it's giving a lot of like workshop, not so much I'm a chef or I'm a baker, but I think this, this worked out. And the last thing on the list for today is to source stems and branches for my DIY centerpiece. This is the vibe that I am going for. I had to, it was an amazing deal. Honestly, I can find it really intimidating to go into flower shops because some are more DIY, I wanna make my own bouquet friendly than others. Like, I like the places where they have stems out for a display, you are allowed to go into the fridge and really they'll work with you to help you make your own versus just hiring them to make it. After visiting so many places yesterday, I feel like I've figured out a few tips so here's my advice for making your own arrangement when you don't know what you're doing. So the florists will always ask you what you're looking for, but like, I'm no expert. I don't really know what I'm looking for, but I always have inspo picks and I can explain things like sticky with berries or flowy droopy greens. You might have to shop around a little bit in order to find the places that put stuff out for you in order to shop on your own versus again, them making something for you. I was asking for stems that are either already dried or preserved or that would dry nicely because I want something that's gonna last a little bit longer than your average floral bouquet. Stock changes all the time, so definitely be prepared to return another day. When I'm building an arrangement, I try to stick to a palette and I also try to pick different textures so that there's some variety, which is kind of like designing a space in a way. Speaking of, quick shout out to our ultimate room makeover course, which is about to open again for another semester and be on sale big time. Our course is a step-by-step -step guide on how to successfully design a space that you love, including budgeting templates, realistic scheduling advice, and students of our course have said that the Discover Your Style chapter was the most helpful. This year we're having a Black Friday sale, which is so exciting to me to actually be able to say that we have a product that we can offer a sale on because last year this time we didn't have this course. Anyways, if you wanna make sure that you don't miss the best deal we've offered on this course so far, you can get on the email list, which is linked at the top of the description or visit our website to be notified when enrollment opens up again and to get your coupon code. Anyways, back to making this floral arrangement. I'm just gonna let you know what I picked up so that if you're looking for similar things, you can ask for these by name. This really small, delicate berry one is Jewels of Opar. These orange berries are Ilex berries. Also, I didn't know any of this until they told me at the flower shops, just so you guys know. I did know that this is baby blue eucalyptus. There's so many different kinds of eucalyptus and they're all very different looking. This is preserved riscus and it comes in a bunch of different colors. And I'm actually not gonna use this in my centerpiece floral arrangement, but you'll see where I use it elsewhere. Then I just have some leftover magnolia leaves. You can see they're a little dry now, as well as some leftover cypress, mountain hemlock, and cedar. 
honestly, I was gonna save this for a later part of the video that like, you can just swap out your textiles. Like if you have something that is maybe more holiday or Christmas, like you don't need to buy something pattern. It's just, I already have these. So for this floral arrangement, I actually saw this inspo pick on Pinterest and I was like, I love how it's functional, but also aesthetic. So that really inspired me to do more of a edible arrangement, if you will. And like, I'm gonna keep this on my island because my table's way too small for a centerpiece. That's just not happening. So in addition to all these greens that I have, I also picked up some pears and some oranges to help with this arrangement. And I have this little clay bowl that we made from polymer clay. This is the first time we actually tried the pepper hack in order to make speckled pottery. Genius idea. I'm actually gonna ruin this DIY by turning it into a flower frog and drilling some holes. Okay, we're just gonna go on this adventure together. <laughs> Wait, why is it perfect? Why is it perfect? Is eucalyptus poisonous? No. On the website mountsinai.org, they say never mind, you should never you take eucalyptus orally. It is toxic if consumed by mouth and may I think it's fine if it's like buy it. We yeah. put it in our shower. Yeah, I'm the only and then I go like this. Yeah. Do you want I'm to the only answer? one where I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. Okay, so the BC boy says, Duh, how did you not know hemlock is poisonous? I also, I don't think it's the biggest deal, but we will omit the hemlock from the arrangement. Chaos. Chaos. Ba da ba ba ba, I'm loving it. So I've already washed my fruit over here. And we're gonna start with these oranges because I want to do the cloves in them. So these are actually called pomander balls. And as the fruit dries out, it releases the fragrance. I mean, it already smells so good. And you can do different patterns. Okay, so tonight, me, Elliot, and Ariana are all cooking together. We're doing a holiday dinner. It's gonna be amazing. And part of Elliot's ideal holiday Christmas vibe for the house is big plates under regular dinner plates. For those of us that don't know, that's called a charger plate. You've probably seen it at weddings or other fancy events. And it actually is functional as well as aesthetic. So when I was thrifting, I actually found some charger plates, but they weren't really my vibe. And also in the essence of not buying new things, I got the idea to use our bowl for pasta and then just one of our larger dinner plates that we already have as the charger plate. Now, you're probably thinking. That sounds boring. Well, yeah, I agree. So we're gonna take some leftover greens. It's just the greens that keep on giving and decorate the bottom charger plate with the greens. Okay, you make eggnog. Okay. I'll drink this spiced meat. Honestly, the highlight of the night is gonna be the pasta though. Okay. All right. Wait, that? didn't I buy a machine so that we don't have to do this? Uh, maybe? Yeah, fuck me. 
So basically, eggnog is lots of eggs, lots of sugar, lots of milk and cream and booze, of which Elliot is choosing to use spiced rum since we just had so much of it. Here you can make pasta with us. This is what we did on our second date. The good old days. Just a little pink and green pasta for Christmas. Arian is really, Arian is really missing out. Oh, hi! Okay, coming in coach. Oh my God, it's so gorgeous. Actually, oh. <laughs> I'm just thirsty. There's for three people. Okay, I'm just gonna like watch and, and be a hype or be a hype woman. If you want, you can peel pears. Yeah, I would love to. From the festive fruit bowl? Yeah. Just quick cue. How do you feel? <laughs> gorge, gorge, gorge. Just like, Okay, gorge, yeah. okay. Honestly, I wish I could feed you my mushroom ravioli pasta because it was so good and I actually didn't even know Elliot was planning on making poached pears with some vegan coconut vanilla ice cream. I honestly think a new tradition is born. Let me know if you have any fun traditions that you want to share and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. I think if I put this on my front porch, it'll get stolen. Mm, I don't know. We're putting it out for the video. <laughs> Let's make some garlands. Now I'm down here. I really did not know if I was gonna decorate down here, but when I found those stockings the other day, I got an idea.